Hello learners, welcome to our senior secondary course. We have gone through module 1, 2, 3, 4. During these programs, we have gone through origin and evolution of earth and life. We have discussed about ecological principles as well as different types of ecosystems such as natural as well as human modified ecosystems. We have discussed about human impact on environment. We have also discussed various contemporary issues dealt in module 4. Now we are taking our journey towards for module 5. This module deals with conservation of environment such as biodiversity and other natural resources such as land, soil and water and energy and various metals and non-metals etc. For this program we will discuss about conservation of biodiversity. This is lesson 15th of module 5. During this program we will discuss about biodiversity, its importance and causes of loss of biodiversity. We will also discuss about various in situ and ex situ methods of conservation and legal measures adopted by national and international labels. Biodiversity include total number of plants, animals and microorganisms. Bio means biological, diversity, variety. I am Neelam Gupta, course coordinator environmental science of NIOS. Welcome you in this program. We have with us Dr. Padmida Saxena, assistant professor Dayal Singh College, University of Delhi. Welcome you ma'am in this program. Thank you Neelam. Learners, now we will start with biological diversity. Some total of all the variety of living organism on earth constitute biodiversity. Biological diversity is usually considered at three different levels. One is genetic diversity that is at genetic level. Second is species diversity which is at the level of species and the third is ecosystem diversity which is studied at the level of ecosystem. We will discuss each of the diversity in detail now. Genetic diversity, it refers to the variety of genes contained within species of plants, animals and microorganisms. New genetic variation in individuals occur by gene and chromosomal mutation and in organisms with sexual reproduction, it spreads across the population by recombination. The differences could be in alleles in the entire gene or in the chromosomal structure. The amount of genetic variation present in an interbreeding population is shaped or decided by the process of natural selection. India has high genetic diversity and is regarded as a Vavilov center of high crop genetic diversity, which is named after the Russian agrobotanist N. I. Vavilov. Now, species diversity, it refers to the variety of species within a geographical area. Species diversity can be measured in terms of species richness which is the number of various species in a defined area, species abundance which refers to the relative numbers among species. For example, the number of species of plants, animal and microorganisms may be more in an area than that recorded in another area. You can see in the diagram the diversity among bird species. Taxonomic or phylogenetic diversity. It refers to the genetic relationship between different group of species. When taxonomically unrelated species are present in an area, the area represents greater species diversity as compared to an area represented by taxonomically related species. We come to ecosystem diversity. It refers to the presence of different types of ecosystem. Ecosystem diversity encompasses the broad differences between ecosystem and the diversity of the habitat and ecological processes occurring within an each ecosystem type. As we see that the tropical South India with rich species diversity will have altogether different structure compared to the desert ecosystem which has far less number of plants and animal species. The same differences we can observe in marine habitat that is in fresh water, sea or an ocean. So, this is the diagram 
depicting ecosystem biodiversity. Now, number of species of animal and plants is shown in this bar diagram. India is a country of vast diversity and it is among 12 mega diversities countries in the world. It has very diverse terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems ranging from ice capped Himalayas to deserts from arid shrub to grassland to wetlands and tropical rainforests from coral reefs to the deep sea. Each of these comprises a great variety of habitat and interaction between and within biotic and abiotic components. The most diversity rich areas are the western ghats and the northeastern region. A very large number of species found in these ecosystems are endemic that is they are found nowhere else except in India. These are concentrated mainly in northeast, western ghats, northwest Himalaya and Andaman and Nicobar islands. Now hotspot of biodiversity, hotspot of biodiversity, uh, biodiversity hotspot is a biogeographic region that is both significant reservoir of biodiversity and is threatened with destruction. The term biodiversity hotspot specifically refers to 25 biologically rich areas around the world that have lost at least 70 percent of their original habitat. Importance of biological diversity, the various benefits of biological diversity can be studied under the following heads. One is ecosystem services, second biological resources, third social benefits and fourth is the research, education and monitoring. Now importance of biological diversity, as you have seen, I have told you, you can see it in the diagram. Now ecosystem services, these services also support human needs and activities such as intensely managed production ecosystems. Now in this we can include some of the headings which are protection of water resources, natural vegetation cover helps in maintaining hydrological cycles, regulating and stabilizing water runoff and acting as a buffer against extreme events such as floods and drought. Second, soil protection, biological diversity helps in the conservation of soil and retention of moisture and nutrients. So this is how we can maintain the ecosystem services. Now clearing large areas of vegetation causes soil erosion, reduces productivity and often results in flash floods. Root system allows penetration of water to the subsoil layer and transport mineral nutrients to the surface by nutrient uptake. Next nutrient storage and cycling. Ecosystem perform the vital functions of recycling nutrients found in the atmosphere as well as in the soil. Plant nutrients form the basis of food chains to be used by a wide range of life forms. Nutrients in the soil are replenished by dead or waste matter by microorganisms. Next point is pollution reduction. Ecosystems and ecological processes play an important role in maintenance of gaseous composition of the atmosphere, breakdown of wastes and removal of pollutants. Natural and artificial wetlands are being used to filter effluents to remove nutrients, heavy metals, suspended solids, reduce the biological oxygen demand and destroy harmful microorganisms. Then climate stability. Vegetation influences climate at macro as well as micro levels. Undisturbed forests help to maintain the rainfall in the vicinity by recycling water vapors at a steady rate back into the atmosphere. Vegetation also exert moderating influence on microclimate. Cooling effects of vegetation makes living comfortable. Some organisms are dependent on such microclimate for their existence. Maintenance of ecological processes. Different species of birds and predators help to control insect pests 
thus reduce the need and cost of artificial control measures. Birds and insects which feed and breed in natural habitat are important pollinating agents of crop and wild plants. Without ecological services provided by bio biodiversity, it would not be possible to get food, pure air to breathe and would be submerged in the waste products. Next is social benefits of biological diversity. Biological resources of economic importance. In this we can include the food, fiber, medicine, fuel wood and ornamental plants. Then breeding material for crop improvement and the future resources. We have done in details in the chapter deforestation about the use of plant and the plant products. So, there is no use for repetition. Now, social benefits, it includes recreation, forests, wildlife, natural park and sanctuaries, gardens and aquaria, they have high entertainment and recreation value. Ecotourism, photography, painting, filmmaking and literary activities are closely related as you have seen in the slide before this. Second is cultural values. Plants and animals are important parts of the cultural life of human. Human cultures have co-evolved with their environment and biological diversity which can be impart a distinct cultural identity to different communities. Research, education and monitoring. To get better use from biological resources, research is going on which maintains the genetic base of harvested biological resources. To rehabilitate degraded ecosystems, we can rehabilitate and restore ecosystem that we have damaged. Almost every natural place on the earth has been affected or degraded to some degree by human activities. We can at least partially reverse such of these harms through ecological restoration. This can be done by forestation which will save the environment, the soil, climate and wildlife etc. Tissue culture, gene bank use of insects and other pest resistant plants. Now, uniqueness of Indian biodiversity. India is uniquely rich in all aspects of biodiversity including ecosystem, species and genetic biodiversity. It has some of the world's most biodiverse regions like the deserts, high mountains, highlands, tropical and temperate forests swamplands, plains, grasslands, areas surrounding rivers as well as islands. The eastern Himalayas region encompassing Bhutan, northeastern India and southern, central and eastern Nepal. The region is geologically young and shows high altitudinal variation. It has nearly 163 globally threatened species including one horned rhinoceros, the wild Asian water buffalo and in all 45 mammals, 50 birds, 17 reptiles, 12 amphibians, 3 invertebrates and 36 plant species. So, causes of biodiversity depletion, reduction or loss of plant and animal species is called as biodiversity depletion. The causes may be a direct way like deforestation, hunting, poaching, commercial exploitation or indirect way which includes modification of the natural habitat, introduction of exotic species and pollution and the third are the natural causes and climate changes. Loss of species is a serious cause of concern for humans. About 79 species of mammals, 44 of birds, 15 of reptiles and 3 of amphibians are threatened and 1500 species of plants are endangered in India. Besides these, the other causes are introduction of exotic species, that is new species entering geographical region 
which may wipe out the native ones. Some examples are Parthenium uh, hysterophorus, which has invaded many of the vacant areas in cities, towns and villages in India, leading to removal of the local plants and the dependent animals. Second is water hyacinth, which clogs lakes and river sides and threatens the survival of many aquatic species. This is very common in Indian plains. Then third is Lantana camera, which is an American weed and has invaded many forest lands in various parts of India and wiped out the native grass species. So, this is the figure which is depicting the depletion of crops by fire, forest fires. IUCN threat categories, the World Conservation Union IUCN formerly which was known as International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources has recognized 8 red list categories according to the conservation status of species. The categories are extinct, a taxon is extinct when there is no reasonable doubt that the last individual has died, extinct in the wild. A taxon is extinct in the wild when exhaustive surveys in known and or exposed habitats have failed to record an individual. Critically endangered, a taxon is critically endangered when it is facing high risk of extinction in the wild in immediate future. Endangered, a taxon is endangered when it is not critically endangered, but is facing a very high risk of extinction in the wild in near future. Vulnerable, taxon is vulnerable when it is not critically endangered or endangered, but facing high risk of extinction in the wild in the medium term future. Lower risk, a taxon is lower risk when it has evaluated and does not satisfy the criteria for critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable. Data, a taxon is data deficient when there is inadequate information to make any direct or indirect assessment of its risk of extinction. Not evaluated, a taxon is not evaluated when it has not yet been assessed against the above criteria. Status of threatened species, according to the red list in India, 144 plant species are critically endangered, 113 endangered and 87 vulnerable. Among animals, 18 are critically endangered, 54 endangered and 143 vulnerable. Few examples of these plants and animals, they are given below, these are the pictures. Now, we come to conservation methods of biological diversity. Conservation is the planned management of natural resources to retain the balance in nature and retain the diversity. It also includes use of natural resources in such a way that the needs of present generation are met and at the same time leaving enough for the future generations. So, these are some of the ways of biodiversity conservation. We can grow trees, recycling, saving paper, saving water and electricity, carpooling, promoting bike riding. Conservation of biodiversity is important to prevent the loss of genetic diversity of a species, save a species from becoming extinct and protect ecosystem damage and degradation. Conservation strategies, conservation efforts can be grouped into the following two categories. One is in situ conservation and the second is ex situ conservation. In situ means on site conservation, which includes protection of the plants and animals within their natural habitats or in protected areas. Protected areas are land or sea dedicated to protect and maintain biodiversity. Ex situ is off-site conservation of plants and animals 
outside their natural habitat and these include botanical gardens, zoo, gene bank, tissue culture and cryopreservation. In the more detailed conservation processes, biosphere reserve and ex situ can be further be extended as given in the next slide. So, this is the slide. Now, in situ methods, the main category for conservation of species is the protection of habitat. Currently, India has about 166 national park. India's first national park was established in the year 1936 as Hele National Park. Now it is known as Jim Corbett National Park, Uttarakhand. Then there are wildlife sanctuaries, 515, biosphere reserves, they are 18 in number, tiger reserves, about 50, elephant reserves, 32 in number. So this is covering an area of 4.7 percent of the geographical area of the country, 21 wetlands, 30 mangrove areas and 4 coral reefs areas have been identified for intensive conservation and management purposes by Ministry of Environment and Forests, Government of India. Now let us discuss about these in situ conservation. National Park, it is an area set aside by national government for the preservation of the natural environment. National park may be set aside for the purpose of public recreation and enjoyment or because of its historical or scientific interest. Most of the landscapes and their accompanying plants and animals in a national park are kept in their natural state. Wildlife sanctuary, a wildlife sanctuary is a naturally occurring area such as an island that provides protection for species from hunting, predation competition or pouching. It is protected area, a geographic territory within which wildlife is protected. Refugees can preserve animals that are endangered. Many national park and sanctuaries have been established to preserve wildlife in their natural environment. Some of them are given in the next slide along with important species found there. So first is Kaziranga sanctuary in Assam where you can find one horned rhinoceros, Manas century in Assam with wildlife buffaloes, Gir forest in Gujarat where you can see loin, cheetal, sambar, wild bear, then Kalameru bird century in Andhra Pradesh famous for pelicans and marine birds, Dekchigam century Jammu and Kashmir for Kashmir stags, Himalayan thar, wild goat, sheep and antelope. Then Kana National Park, Tiger, Leopard, Wild Dog, etc. Wild Conservation Society in India is association with other NGO partners and tribal people making every possible effort to develop new models of wildlife conservation to preserve India's most treasured fauna and to protect the environment. Biosphere Reserve. A biosphere reserve is an ecosystem with plants and animals of unusual scientific and natural interest. It is a label given by UNESCO to help protect the sites in the year 1975. The plan is to promote management, research and education in ecosystem conservation. This includes the sustainable use of natural resources. So these are the biosphere reserves in India. A biosphere reserve consists of core, buffer and transition zone. The buffer zone is fully protected and natural area of the biosphere reserve least disturbed by human activities. It is legally protected ecosystem in which entry is not allowed except with permission for some special purposes. The second is the buffer zone surrounds the core zone and is managed to accommodate a great variety of resource use strategies and research and educational activities. The third is the transition zone, the outermost part of the biosphere reserve. It is an area of active cooperation between the reserve management and the local people wherein activities like settlements, cropping forestry, recreation and other economic uses that are in harmony with the 
conservation goals. The Tiger Reserves Project Tiger is governed National Tiger Conservation Authority. India is home to 70 percent of tigers in the world. In 2006, there were 1411 tigers which increased to 1706 in 2010 and in 2014 it is 2226. The total number of wild tigers has also risen to 3890 in 2016 according to the World Wildlife Fund and Global Tiger Forum. Elephant Reserves Project Elephant was launched in the year 1992 by the Government of India to provide financial and technical support of wildlife management efforts by states for their free-ranging population of wild Asian elephants. The project aims to ensure long-term survival of viable populations of elephants in their natural habitat. Then Crocodile Breeding and Management Project. This project was established in the year 1976 with FAO UNDP assistance to save three endangered crocodilian species namely the freshwater crocodile, the saltwater crocodile and the rare gharial. Eleven centuries have been declared specifically for crocodile protection, sacred forests and lakes, small forest patches protected by tribal communities due to religious sanctity. These have been free from all disturbances. Sacred forests are located in several parts of India like Karnataka, Maharashtra, Kerala, Meghalaya. Similarly, several water bodies, for example, Khichapalri Lake in Sikkim, people have declared sacred leading to the protection of aquatic flora and fauna. Many rivers are also considered sacred. Now, ex situ conservation is the botanical garden and zoos. Botanical garden, it is a place where plants, especially ferns, conifers and flowering plants are grown and displayed for the purpose of research and education. The main objective of gardens are ex situ conservation and propagation of important threatened plant species, serve as a center of excellence for conservation, research and training, build public awareness through education on plant diversity and need for conservation. Then the Indian Botanical Garden in Havra in West Bengal is over 200 years old. Other important botanical gardens are in Uti, Bangalore and Lucknow. The most recent one is the Botanical Garden of Indian Republic established at Noida near Delhi in April 2002. Zoos. A number of zoos have been developed in the country. These zoological parks have been looked upon essentially as center of education about animal species and recreation. They have also played an important role in the conservation of endangered animal species such as the Manipur Thamin deer and the white winged woodwork. Notable successful examples of captive breeding are those of Gangetic gharial, turtles and the white tiger. Gene banks, ex situ collection and preservation of genetic resources is done through gene bank and seed banks. The National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, New Delhi, preserves seeds of wild relatives of crop plants as well as cultivative varieties. The National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources at Karnal, Haryana, maintains the genetic material for domesticated animals and the National Bureau of Fish Genetic Research, Lucknow, for fishes. Now, cryopreservation, it is the freeze preservation, is particularly useful for conserving vegetative propagated crops. Cryopreservation is the storage of material at ultra low temperatures of liquid nitrogen and essentially involves suspension of all metabolic processes and activities. Cryopreservation has been successfully applied to meristems, zygotic and somatic embryos pollen protoplast cells and suspension cultures of a number of plant species. Conservation at molecular level, germplast conservation at molecular level is known feasible and attracting attention. 
cloned DNA and material having DNA in its native state can be used for genetic conservation. Furthermore, non-viable material representing valuable genotypes stored in gene banks can be used as sources of DNA libraries from where relevant gene or a combination of genes can be recovered. Then legal measures. Market demand for some body parts like bones of tiger, rhino horn, fur, ivory skin, musk, peacock feather etc. results in killing the wild animal. The Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 contained provisions for penalties or punishment to prevent pouching and illegal trade. India is also a signatory to the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. The convention entered into force on 1st July 1975. So, these are the legal measures. Government of India has also passed the Biological Diversity Act of 2002. An act to provide for conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of its component and fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of the use of biological resources, knowledge and for matters connected thereafter or incidental thereto. Whereas, India is rich in biological diversity and associated traditional and contemporary knowledge system relating thereto. This is all about the biological diversity, how we can protect it and conserve it. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Padmja for sharing information related to biodiversity, conservation of the lesson 15. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what, uh, what you have learned. Study of biodiversity have become very important. Biodiversity has three labels, genetic, species and community of, or ecosystem biodiversity. India is very rich in biodiversity and is one of the 12 mega diversity countries globally. The IUCN Red List is the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of threatened plant and animal species. It is important to ensure the conservation of landscapes, ecosystems, species and genetic resources which it will create survival crisis for mankind. Conservation strategies include in situ and ex situ approaches. In situ includes national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserve etc. Ex situ conservation includes botanical gardens, zoos, gene banks and seed banks, cryopreservation and preservation of germplasm. The Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and Biodiversity Act 2002 at the national level and the sites and the Convention on Biodiversity at the international level regulate the trade in biodiversity and promote its conservation and sustainable use. So the key objective of this lesson is conservation of biological diversity, sustainable of biodiversity and fair sharing of benefits from utilization of genetic resources. So save biodiversity and protect the mother earth. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 15, biological diversity or biodiversity conservation. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.